Hello everyone. Welcome back to Plant Simulation Pro. Today, we will learn the different options to connect methods and trigger them. In the plant simulation methods are the small programs which you can connect and trigger to create some logics. So it is important to know which are the places to connect them and also possibilities to trigger or call them. Let's find out different ways to trigger the methods. First way to call the method is manual method execution. Just right click on the method and select run. The method will be executed. If the method is already open, you can also find the run button in the ribbon or just press F5. This is how manual method execution works. Now let's see the second way to trigger the method. Second way is control based trigger. Some objects have capabilities to configure controls within the object. The objects can be station, buffer, or sources. Let's dive deeper into control based triggers with an example. Take station, source, and two buffers into the frame and connect them using connectors. Now take a method into the frame too. Then open the station and head to the controls. Drag method into the exit control of the station. Click on apply and OK. This means that every time a part is ready to move to the next destination, the method will be triggered. Now, let's open the method and write some code. In the method, we'll check if the part's number is even. If it is, we'll move the part to one buffer, otherwise, we'll move it to the other buffer. Now open event controller and start simulation to check if the method is triggered and logic is working. So, every time a part reaches the exit control, our method evaluates its number. If it's even, off it goes to buffer 1. If it's odd, it heads to buffer 2. This is how control base trigger works. Now let's move to the third way to trigger the method. Third way is method to method trigger. The best way to trigger any method is with the help of other method. That can be init method or any other method. Let's see this in the example. Add new method and a global variable into the frame. Click on global variable and press F2 to rename it to MU count. Now open the method and write some code. In the method, we'll count the number of parts produced in the station with the help of MU count variable. Click on apply changes. Open the first method and at the end add the code. Method 1. Click on apply changes and close it. Now start the simulation again. First method will trigger the second method and produced parts will be counted. This is how method to method trigger works. Now let's find out the fourth way to trigger the method. Fourth way is sensor based trigger. Sensors can be created in the objects like conveyors and tracks and those sensors have sensor controls. So when sensors detect some things then the method will be triggered. This makes very easy to handle parts or transporters within conveyors or tracks. Let's learn it with the practical example of sensor based trigger. Continue in the same model by adding two conveyors after two buffers in the frame. Connect the conveyors properly to ensure the flow of parts. Now create two global variables named MU count 2 and MU count 3. These variables will count the number of parts passing through the conveyor 1 and conveyor 2. Within the frame, add a new method and name it as count parts. This method will handle the logic for counting the parts. Open the conveyor settings and navigate to the controls section. Click on the sensor section and create a new sensor. Set the distance to 0.5 meter. Drag and drop the newly created method into the control area. Click Apply and then OK in both the windows. Repeat the same procedure for the second conveyor. Open the count parts method which was created earlier and write the code. In the method, we'll count the number of parts passing through the conveyors in with the help of M, U count 2 and 3 variables. The method will be triggered whenever a part touches the sensor. The code checks which sensor was activated and updates the corresponding count variable. Click on apply changes. Now start the simulation. As parts pass through the sensors, the counters will keep track of the total number of parts. So here sensors are helping to count the number of parts. Like this, plenty of possibilities are there to use sensors and sensor-based trigger. 
Now let's learn the fifth way to trigger the method. Fifth way is time-based trigger. In the time-based trigger, method can be executed by using the attribute called execute in. This can be used in any method to execute the same method or any other method after certain time. Let's learn this with an example. Take a new method and write the code. In the method, we will check if station is failed or not. If yes then open the debugger. Otherwise schedule to call method again after one minute. Here, execute in attribute is used to trigger the same method after one minute. Add a debugger in the method too. Now let's take another method and name it in it. Write the code and click apply changes. Here execute in method is used to call method 2 from init method. Let's start the simulation. Method 2 will be execute first from init and check if the station is failed or not. If not then it will be called after one minute again. And there you have it, five ways to call methods. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you gain new insights from this video, you should not miss another video regarding how to use init method to understand more about methods. See you in that video and keep simulating.